Hello everyone and welcome to the Sunday special. This is going to be episode 25 and I've got something pretty cool for you guys this week. Uh, here the, the past few, uh, about a week ago, we celebrated the 20th anniversary of the release of Final Fantasy IX. What a landmark game, a return to roots as we will discuss here in a few minutes. And as you can hear the uh, music behind me, a very sentimental title. Um, it was some, one of my favorite Final Fantasy games. And so in this one, we have got two interviews with uh, some of the makers of this game. There was a part three that uh, is supposed to be released, but it has not been released yet. So we're just going to go with the first two, and uh, I think we'll get the general idea from it so i want you to sit back and relax as uh, i read to you these interviews and you can think back uh, with fondness on this title um, final fantasy 9 like, again hard to believe it's been 20 years but i uh, hope you enjoy that here on today's sunday special so this interview comes via the final fantasy portal site um, again the anniversary was back on july 7th of this year. The first interview is going to be with event design and scenario writer Kazuhuki Aoki. And we'll get to the names of the other gentlemen in part two. So here is the first question. Final Fantasy IX is sometimes introduced with the phrase returning to roots. Where did Final Fantasy IX sit in the minds of the development team? He answers. The slogans returning to roots and return the crystal were there from the start. And that's why the setting of the game also has a medieval fantasy theme. Next question. It is true that compared from the science fiction elements of FF7 and 8, Final Fantasy IX made a sudden return to classic fantasy. There were even references to past Final Fantasy titles, like character and vehicle names. Were those concepts also planned to be included from the beginning of development under the theme of returning to roots? Aoki's answer. There were some things that were planned from the beginning, and then there were other elements that came about from those in charge in each part of the game during the creation process. The newborn chocobo named Bobby Corwin smashed, together, smashed those names together, and you get Boko. The foundation is 10%, and the, and the remaining 90% comes from the individual creators putting their own ideas and heart into the project. I think that's the creation process, not only of Final Fantasy, but all games from Square Enix. Here's the next question. Each main character of Final Fantasy IX carries their own background story into the battles they face. Do you have a favorite character? Please tell us your reasons, if any. I uh, have answer. I did my best not to have favorites, so as not to be biased during, to, toward any specific character. There were backstories we wanted to elaborate more on, but sadly had to give up on due to time and data constraints. At the time, I wished I could have developed how Zadane was afflicted by the difference in social status between him and Garnett a little more. Illustrating the breakdown relationships with the nobles in Trino due to their disapproval of Zadane and Garnett's relationship, Zadane put up butting up against the social confines he faces with the incredible power Garnett holds as royalty and how Zidane gets back up on his feet despite all that. I felt that would have done a lot to help further portray him as a character. And the next statement was the NPCs were also very well developed. What about them? Uh, answers. I don't have any biases when it comes to NPC characters either. There actually wasn't any differentiation in my mind between main characters and sub-characters. Once the game's story started to come to life on screen, my drive to develop each character even further. The steadfast reliability of Marcus or Garnett's internal struggles, for example, only got stronger. Next question is, the Tantalus members... Uh, I hope I pronounced these ones correctly. Um, it's kind of hard with some of these because you never actually heard them pronounced. So it's how I always kind of pronounce them in my head. Um, the Tantalus members didn't... <laughs> Genero, Zenero, Benero 
and all their siblings are in an unusual bunch. How did they come to be? Aoki's answer. There wasn't a trace of them until right before the game went gold. Not only limited to Final Fantasy IX, each Final Fantasy series title has a period of about three or four months of quality improvements and brushing up all the elements that will be included in the game are implemented. How can we make it more interesting? What would make it easier to understand? What new discoveries can we find to add to the experience? As a creator, you approach the process with a feeling similar to uh, recreating something entirely. Those siblings came about suddenly right in the middle of final tweaking for the game. The characters in Final Fantasy IX are built shorter than in previous FF games. Was there a reason for that? His answer... I don't know the reason for making the characters shorter in stature, but I did often hear that the cutscene team had a hard time making use of the know-how they gained from work on Final Fantasy VIII. It was apparently a lot of trial and error. The characters in Final Fantasy IX excel at showing certain sweetness or silliness, but even when they take on a totally different but serious tone, their expressions were so genuine. I felt that Final Fantasy IX had quite a good balance going in that sense. Uh, this game is known for uh, its many popular and memorable lines. Whose idea was it to put together the loading screen of CG screenshots overlaid with words from the game and art? Okay, the cutscene leader and event staff made that by picking out lines from the game. There was also the manifestation of a strong desire to show what kind of characters these were the next question there were also many monsters with unique gimmicks such as ragtime mouse's quiz style battle do you have a favorite monster or gimmick used by one his answer i'm not sure if you call it a unique monster but my favorite were the black mages who appear in claria i believe that's how you say it claria c-l-e-y-r-a your party characters don't do a victory pose even if you win against them that came from the battle system team's coordination of the scene those battles take place in. You grow used to the characters celebrating when they win a battle, so I was really surprised when I saw that the first time. I don't know if this is still true, but development happened with next to no meetings in between the event and battle designs teams. Although that's not to say that those teams didn't get along. Next question. Final Fantasy IX had a lot of mini games, many of which are quite difficult. Are... Are any of those you find particularly memorable? His answer, Chocobo, Hot and Cold, of course. It came from the director wanting some con some contents that would allow traveling all over the game world. The concept came together, came together in less than 30 minutes, but the actual creators who worked on the mini game put a lot more time into that. Every last detail was done with such care. Final Fantasy IX soundtrack was handled by Mr. Noburu Uramatsu. We feel that music is another important factor in expressing characters or story. Are there any songs from the soundtrack that really stand out in your memory? Please tell us about them. His answer. That would be the song that Mr. Yumamatsu played for me the first time he worked at the Hawaii office. It was in response to me asking if he had any recommended songs from the new game. I got an idea for part of the story the second it came on. That song would, would eventually be titled, You're Not Alone. I asked, are there going to be any more changes to it? And he responded, yes, sorry. I'd like to tweak it a little bit more. It wasn't finalized until the last minute, so I'm sure he really struggled with the composition of that piece. Here's the next question. Was there anything during the development was it especially challenging or that sticks out in your mind? His answer, the last few weeks we were a battle with data restrictions. We had data increasing every day. Having to think about where to divide the story so we'd end up with an amount that fit on each of the four discs. That fine tuning took some real mental gymnastics. If there's anything else from your experience during development or messages that people would like to have, you'd be willing to share. We would love to hear it. And here's his final answer. There were about 300 people at the party celebrating Final Fantasy IX's completion. It was developed by a team divided between Japan and Hawaii, so about one-third of the faces there I'd never seen before. I was surprised all over again about how many people were involved in the project. I'm incredibly happy that Final Fantasy IX is loved by so many people. 
that's been a huge motivator and confidence booster when I'm facing jobs I've had since. I think that's true not only for me, but for the many creators who worked on the game. It'd be nice to celebrate the game's 20th anniversary with everyone who was at the post-launch party. Near the end of that party, there was a moment, and the sound effect team went up on the stage's venue. In Final Fantasy X, there's going to be this thing called Blitzball, and there's going to be a scene with the spectators cheering. We'd love if you would all be willing to help with that, they said. And I thought, oh, they've already started working on X. <laughs> Just when I thought things were finished, they had already begun a new Final Fantasy. It really hit me there. This is how the Final Fantasy series continues on forever. So that's the end of the first interview. That's some pretty cool stuff. Um, we'll take a quick break here, have a word from Anchor, and be back with the second interview here on the JRPG Report. All right, everybody, welcome back. This will be the second part of this interview and I did even double check to make sure that third part was not out there and it is not which is a shame because the the last interview is from the actual director Hiroyuki Ido so maybe I'll just read that to you on the next podcast uh, whenever it does come up but this interview is going to be with character designer and game artist Toshiyuki Adahana and here is his first question Final Fantasy IX is often known as a title that is about returning to its roots. <laughs> Are there any scenes from the game that ring true to that theme in your mind? Uh, his answer, the parts of Final Fantasy IX that feel like a return to the roots of Final Fantasy. I think of the scene where the airship docks into the castle, backed by the evening sky, the opening scene might be the most quintessential portrait of Final Fantasy. It's very true. Uh, next question. Each main character of FF9 carries their own background story to the battles they face. Do you have a favorite? Please tell us which one. His answer. Um, so as if you can't already tell, there's a, a lot of these are the same questions, just asked to different people. Uh, his answer was, I'm quite fond of Vivi, but I have to say that Zidane might be my favorite. Strong yet with a kind compassion for others. He's a true hero in my mind. The fact that he's a joker who doesn't conduct himself with... Uh, like a hero makes him all that much more wonderful of a character. I think his first answer <laughs> was the correct one. Vivi has always been one of my favorite characters in all of Final Fantasy. Uh, next question is, of course, the main characters are well established, but there are truly some unforgettable NBCs filling out hit the world as well. His answer, there's a lot of characters in Final Fantasy IX whose backgrounds I'm curious about, like how Baku managed to bring the Tantalus theater group together from such a diverse group of characters, or why Sid was so trusted by everybody. And Vivi, for example. How did he get the play ticket and make his way to Alexandria? That's just one of the things I'd like to know. As for NPCs, I really like Marcus from Tantalus. He's the type of guy who works behind the scenes, supporting his comrades, but isn't afraid to take action when the situation calls for it. I'd love to know how he came to join Tantalus. On top of Baku and Marcus, Tantalus had a lot of unusual members, such as Zenero and his siblings, too. The Tantalus Theater Group was primarily designed by the art director, Mr. Minanabe. At first, during development, there was talk of Ruby Bing and Oyama, which is a traditional Japanese kabuki theater term referring to a male actor who plays female roles. Although I'm not sure how the official lore would have on that ended up. The other Tantalus, me Tantalus members' backgrounds were always a mystery, even during the character planning stages. Someday, I'd like to hear about their origins in depth. The characters in Final Fantasy IX were shorter in stature than those titles released before. Was there a reason for that? His answer, I wasn't part of the development team when it was decided uh, that Final Fantasy characters... Final Fantasy IX's characters would be shorter than before, so I don't know the reason. However, I think the way characters are almost overly expressive with big exaggeration body language looks great because they're shorter statues, and I feel that matches very well with the motifs of theater and stage that permeate through FF9. The CG screenshots overlaid with character lines that play during the when the game loads or another memorable way that Final Fantasy IX showed his characters. Idahana's answer. The character poses that ended up in the art that in the art ended up primarily being used for promotional and 
UI purposes. Art director, Mr. Minanaba, and I made the art by giving the CG team pose ideas and then painting over the CG that they got back to us. We think that Mr. Yumamatsu's music played a large part in expressing Final Fantasy IX's unique characters and worlds. Are there any songs from the soundtrack that are particularly memorable to you? His answer. There are a lot of well-known songs from Final Fantasy IX, so I'd like to talk about one that doesn't get much attention. I love Quina's theme. Quina, Quina's, sorry. The banging rhythm of drums when the song starts, that strong, steady sound gives me a lot of courage. When I'm super overloaded or feeling pressure of an approaching deadline, in the middle of that night, I'll listen to uh, Quina's Quina's. I don't understand how to quite say her name or its name, I guess. Quina's theme while working. Next question. We heard that you did some Final Fantasy IX illustration commissions for Coca-Cola commercial and figures exclusive to Japan. Is there anything that you were especially careful about because it was a collaboration? He says, the request from Coca-Cola collaboration characters came in the design work for Final Fantasy IX's development was almost finished, so I had very little trouble designing them. If Tantalus were the official royal ba family band, I imagine that they would be a wandering troop that comes to Alexandria once a year. That's the image I used when designing for the collaboration. Final Fantasy IX had a lot of mini games, many of which are difficult. Are there any that you're particularly fond of? Um, the one I played the most was Tetramaster, which I took part in the design of. But the mini game that stands out the most about it is probably Ragtime Mouse's Quiz. He asked a lot of tough questions. My favorite mini game music is from the Sword Fight mini game. Oh gosh. I don't. Bamu Alara Flamikio. <laughs> Sorry. Speaking of the quiz mini game, Final Fantasy IX has a lot of monsters with unusual gimmicks. Do you have a favorite monster? He said, I've already mentioned Ragtime Mouse, so aside from that, I suppose Armstrong. You can see the little legs sticking out from the bottom, and it's always wobbling back and forth. It's just too cute. Next question. Were there any other interesting happenings or things that you struggle with, particularly remembered during the development? He says, in the credits, I'm characterized uh, as the design, as a character designer. But during the latter stages of development, I did overpainting of large pre-rendered background images. That including adjusting colors and areas in the background that we wanted users to look at and stand out more. Or lowering the color saturation areas that didn't need to be looked at so much. If you'll notice, you'll notice if you check the back of, if you check the map of Alexandria's pub, but the color saturation is adjusted in a way that places where the player can move or where the characters will be placed are well lit. And places other than that have their color saturated adjusted so dark that they're almost gray. The stairs were also broken up so that the player can... Uh, <laughs> So as to keep the player from trying to go upstairs. It's hand-drawn as well. It was tedious work that took a lot of patience, but we learned a lot about drawing from it. Uh, one last question. We'd love for you to share some of your feelings about working on the game and a message for the fans who still love it. He said, Now that the 20th anniversary is here, I've been hearing a lot about how Final Fantasy IX has always been highly praised in polls about FF games in both Jap Japan and the West. I feel that it is a game with a timeless story. A strongly established theme of lovable, unique characters. On the 20th anniversary of Final Fantasy IX, it would make me very happy if people who have yet to experience this game gave it a shot. Or those who played it 20 years ago also tried it again. I hope each player finds a character that resonates with them. It's not a terrible idea. I haven't played it in quite a while. Um, now that I'm kind of thinking about it, I don't think I... I know I played it obviously when it came out, and maybe again shortly thereafter, but it's certainly uh, certainly been a while. I've felt my Vita. I've got it downloaded from the PlayStation Store, so it might be something I uh, get to here, here shortly. So, yeah, this one was planned to be a little bit longer uh, with that third interview, but since it didn't happen, this will just end up being a short Sunday special. 
they can't always be hour and a half shows, right? Sometimes it's closer to 20 minutes or so. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a like on Facebook. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, make sure you subscribe and like our videos on YouTube. I talk about all the um, videos. Well, all the videos that we talk about are posted there, as well as video versions of our podcast. You can listen while you're pretending to work. Uh, my name is James Fisher. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and all of them. And don't forget, get back out there and level up.